This is a story of one family torn apart when one of their children makes a claim that ultimately causes trauma for them all. You can decide who's telling the truth and whether the state's actions were in the children's best interest. It's a quiet spring night in Indianapolis in a blue collar neighborhood on the city's south side. A phone call earlier in the day has set off a chain of events captured by MSNBC cameras. It will prove to be some of the most sensitive videotape ever recorded for television. The call has brought a child welfare investigator to the home of Carrie and Michelle Pitcock. Michelle's 13-year-old daughter, Amber, has accused her stepfather of abuse. He claims it's Amber who is causing the family turmoil. You will see the drama that plays out over the next year shows what a fine line there can be between protecting parents' rights versus the welfare of children. You, you just wanted me... Well, we need assistance because we have to go up there and we weren't sure how this guy was going to be with the whole situation. The CPS coming in because we have one of his children. This is the most gut-wrenching part of a child welfare investigator's job. She's already at the hospital for his other child is, so we're here to talk to them about that situation as well as the other two remaining kids okay. in the hospital. Okay, well, I'll just stay out your way unless you have any business. Sir. No problem. Jackie Bean is following up on a report from a 13-year-old girl who says her stepdad hit her. At 9 p.m. on a school night, Jackie shows up at this Southside Indianapolis home to check out the story. She and her police escort have no idea what to expect once they're inside. Did you call the police? How did that come about? It started, I didn't know at first. I, see, I, last night, my wife went and got her from um, youth emergency groups. Mm -hmm. Kerry Pitcock is Amber's stepdad. He says he and his wife, Michelle, are at a loss about how to handle their teenage daughter. They say she's running wild and out of control, and that tonight is a perfect example. Well, she decided to kick and push on my wife. Well, that's when I stepped in. Well, when I decided I was going to stop her from being abusive to my wife, she started kicking me and biting me and told me to get the F off her. I wasn't nobody or nothing. So you stepped in? I, I had to step in to keep my wife from being abused, yeah. And then she was hitting you too? And she kicked you? She kicked I mean, I still have marks on my chest and I got, well, you can see here where she bit me. I mean, this is what we're going through. And she, but yet she's the one hollering abuse, you know. Right. And so I'll, did you hit her tonight? I smacked her in her mouth for telling me to get the F off of her. Did yeah, I did. Did you smack her once or about how many times do you think you hit her? Twice. Twice. With an open hand. I mean, okay. it was my finger. I mean, it was my, the tips of my fingers that hit her. So you hit her twice. Which side of the face? Just on the mouth? Well, I cupped her face. I mean, it wasn't oh, even a really okay. smack. It was a cup. Okay. Then get some, get some milk. Did you hit, some tea. did you smack her today on the face or anything? No. Because she's got some bruising above her head and on her nose and down her face here. That's from being hit in the wall. That's from. Yeah, I, uh, I notified the uh, counselor last night. Uh-huh. The foster kids she used to hang around with told her how to do things like this. Mm -hmm. The Pitcocks have been a blended family of five for 10 years, but the last year has been especially tough. My seven-year-old Carter, she gets into it with us, she will take her fist and hit herself or hit herself against the wall to put marks on her hmm. to try to get us. Okay. And my seven-year-old was a witness to that. And the counselor last night, she wasn't informed of things like that. But no, she wasn't hit by neither one of us tonight hard enough to put a mark on her. Cause let me show you the picture I took of her. I mean, it doesn't show it much, but she's got a lump on her head. And then she's got some finger marks down here. And then well, bruising under okay. her eye. Now, the red rash, uh -huh. that is a constant thing with my... looks like a rash. That is a constant thing with yeah, her. She's, she's there's allergic. some definite hand marks there. Yeah, well, she is, she's allergic to, to chicken. As we think, because every time she has chicken, her face does that. We got a chicken. As police face. stand guard at the front door, Carrie nervously suspects he's about to be arrested. What's the other officer doing here calling him out? They ain't planning on pressing charges on me. What? About what? What about it? She's hollering abuse until the cop caught up, looked at me, and rung her out. I hope it wouldn't come down to this. Well, definitely. That's. I mean, because she's got some pretty substantial marks on her face. Now, I know you're saying that she did them herself. I mean, I, I'm trying to remember because it would be on her left side, and it looked like maybe somebody had hit her like this way or something. The only time she got smacked when I was detaining her, she told me to get the hip off of her. Mm -hmm. And the way I was laying, there's no way that I, I could hit her like mm -hmm. this because it would have been across her like this because I was laying 
crossbody like this and had her detained. Mm -hmm. she told me, and she got one on loose, told me to get that ball. And the only way I could hit her was like that. Okay. Okay. So, I mean, my finger, if it was from her fingertips, it'd be on her left side of her face, not her right. Mm -hmm. It is on her left side of her face. Over here? Yeah. Well, I don't know. I, she wouldn't have got them from here because, like I said, there you can see the bone in my hand, how it's broken. And there's no way I could hit her with enough pressure to bruise her nose with that hand. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm going to give you these because we're going to have to go to court on Monday for her. Um, and I'm, I've got one for your wife, too. I'll leave these on the so table So i got to be there her. Monday? Well, since she's your It's sister. been almost an hour since Jackie's arrival. She's made it clear Carrie will have to explain himself to a judge before Amber can come back home. I'll be following it with the judge. And I am going to write in there that it looks like you guys hit her. So be prepared that when you get to court that you will have to explain yourself to the judge because I'm going to say child stated that the father hit her um, and she does have marks and bruises on her face and some swelling as well. So office family children are saying that you hit your child. Now I understand from what you're telling me that you did not hit her hard enough to leave a mark or a bruise. Right. That's something the judge is going to have to figure out, okay? And, you know, depending on what the hospital says tonight too, That I mean it... If she has a broken nose or something, that's going to be a problem. It's only been a matter of hours since the crisis escalated, set in motion with a phone call to police from Carrie and Michelle asking for help with a daughter they claim was out of control. Now, Carrie is about to be blindsided. I've never, never hit my child in an anger enough force to do any kind of bodily damage. Okay. Never. Okay. Do you mind if I look around the house a little bit? Go ahead. Okay. So just who is telling the truth tonight? Is it Amber, who has accused her stepdad of abuse? Or is it Carrie, her stepfather? At this point, Jackie doesn't know for sure. And that's why what is about to unfold will shake this father to the core. Just how far can the government go? I've got a problem here with your other two kids, too, because of the marks on her. I don't see how she could have done that herself. Carrie Pitcock's 13-year-old stepdaughter, Amber, is in protective custody at a local hospital tonight with cuts and bruises she received just hours earlier. She says Carrie is responsible. Carrie and his wife, Michelle, say Amber is a teenager out of control, and she is the threat to the family. What's the real story? That'll play out later in juvenile court. What's about to happen tonight will come as a complete shock to Carrie Pitcock, who believes the worst-case scenario is that he'll be spending the night in jail. Now, I've got a problem here with your other two kids, too, because of the marks on her. I don't see how she could have done that herself. She's got a handprint across her eye here. She's got finger marks. Um, she's got bruising across the nose and bruising on her head. So I'm going to have to take them with me tonight, and then you have to go to court on Monday. Oh, wait a minute. And I know you don't want to hear that as a parent. Oh, but wait a minute. That's what we're going to Wait have. a minute. My daughter's causing problems, and you're taking the rest of my kids away from me? Well, because of the marks on her, Man. I can't leave two other kids with the risk of them being injured. Well, wait well. a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Why don't you check my other kids and talk to my other kids mm -hmm. and give us the benefit of the doubt before you take right. my kids out of my well, house? Well, I've already talked to the supervisor about it, and she looked at your daughter and talked to your daughter as well. And she told me to come and get the other kids, too, so. Oh, now, see, this is where, I'm glad you're coming. This is where, as a this parent, we are getting right? railroaded. Mm -hmm. I've got one kid I can't see no more. Now you're telling me I got to fight and prove myself to keep my other three? When I got one that's doing everything she can to defy us and run away from mm -hmm. home, and she's costing me the rest right. of my kids? Right. I'm sorry, I do got a problem with it. And I know you Investigator Bean fears Pitcock's younger children are in danger. Yet there is no talk of taking him into custody. I know you're in Why don't you ask right my kids if they want to go? Because they're not of age to tell me that what's best for them. So we can't leave it up to but you. But you can go by one girl's word, mm -hmm. and even though I've been through the system... You know what? If she didn't have these marks on her face, if you had smacked her on the bottom, something like that, we wouldn't have these marks. When you hit a kid in the face, you risk leaving marks like that. Now, I understand you're saying all you did was hit her in the mouth, but she's got marks on her eye and on her forehead that she couldn't do herself. Now, there's a thing as child abuse. Is there a thing of parent abuse? And okay, that's because something that's for you to deal with because you got to court and through the police. But that you gives you a right to take my kids. I'd rather you so. lock me up than take my kids. I understand that. No, you don't understand, ma'am. 
You ever had your kids taken away from you? You ever lost one? Uh, yeah. I'm sorry about your loss. I'm well, no, no, no. There's no. nothing I can do to change no, that. No, I'm not understand. You don't know what it's like for somebody to take you. Have you ever had somebody take your kids out of your house so you ain't a fit parent? In the midst of this chaos and tension, four-year-old Brent at least appears to be lost in his own world. But he will soon be swept up in the ordeal. Meanwhile, his seven-year-old brother Carl is sound asleep upstairs in his room. Now what we can do is both of you can come over tomorrow afternoon at 1.30 if you want to visit with the kids and see them, make sure they're okay and safe and stuff like that. That'll help put you at ease slightly. Wait a minute, why don't we, okay, let's find something we can find medium. Fine, my kid. Oh, you can't put my kids in somebody else's custody for the night? I'm sorry, but that's what we're going to have to do. Oh, this is, this is flat out bull. No, you don't understand. No, you don't understand. Do you want to get your older son and bring him down? I, mean, I think it would be better for him if you guys did it rather than me going up, waking him up and bringing him down. But it is up to you. I'll go get him if you want me to, or you can go get him. You got no I'm not pushing right. this. I'm sorry. Mommy, I'm not you got no this. right. Now I know why you brought the law out here. See? You are so full of shit, ma'am. You got no right taking my kids. None. You got a 13 year old lesson out here running the streets, running away from home, controlling what happens to the rest of my kids. Yeah. Have to come to court on Monday at 10. And at that point, let me, I mean, you will have the right to an attorney when you get there, and you have the right to no, a hearing, which I is what we're no doing. Rights. Well, no, I mean, this is what I'm giving you right here is about the rights. The detention hearing, 48 hours, we'll be doing that Monday. You have the right for a court proceedings and petition. I'll give you a copy of that one day. And you can ask for an attorney then. You need, or you can bring one you need with. to get out of here. You need to get out of here let my wife bring my kids to you. Okay. I'll leave As emotions boil over, no one knows what Carrie will do when his boys are taken away in the middle of the night. And ultimately, whose best interest is actually being served? You can't live with me no more. And you ask her why. We're going to go spend the night someplace else tonight. She's taking okay. you. I gotta fight to keep you. You may not be allowed to come back home. I no wanna stay with Daddy. No, I'm gonna tell you exactly yeah. what it's like. I ain't pulling no punches well, with my kids. Okay. Never have. You got no right. Now I know why you brought the law out here. Carrie and Michelle Pitcock are in a state of shock. An hour ago, Carrie assumed police and child welfare officials were here to haul him off to jail. Carrie's stepdaughter, Amber, claims Carrie beat her earlier in the day. None. Carrie claims Amber was out of control. He and Michelle were actually the first to call police for help. Now he learns the truth. They're here to take away his other two kids. Tonight is a tough night for child welfare investigator Jackie Bean, too. I mean, you will have the right to an attorney when you get there, and you have the right to a hearing, which is what we're doing. Well, no, I mean, this is what I'm giving you right here is about the rights. The detention hearing. 48 hours, we'll be doing that Monday. You have the right for a court proceedings and petition. I'll give you a copy of that Monday. And you can ask for an attorney then. You need, or you can bring one you need to get out of here. You need to get out of here let my wife bring my kids to you. Okay. Puppy. I'll leave this here then. Puppy. Puppy. You can't bring the puppy. Come here, Brent. Come on, sweetie. This lady's taking you away from your parents. You can't live with me no more. And you ask her why. We're going to go spend the night someplace else tonight. She's taking okay. you. i got to fight to keep you. You may not be allowed to come back home. No I want to stay with horrible. Daddy. No, I'm going to tell you exactly what it's like. I ain't pulling no punches with oh, my kids. Okay. Never have. You don't have to. Hey, baby, get your shoes on, babe. We're going to go for a ride. We're going to go over someplace else away, to spend the night. And your mom and dad are going to come to court on Monday. Because Sissy said Daddy abused her. So now these, this lady is taking all you, you know kids what? away from me. Let me take my stuff off and one up. Let me take the other because this is cool. Excuse me. Okay. Hey, sweetie, come on, I'll help you put your shoes on. While seven-year-old Carl is still in a daze, Indianapolis police are in the kitchen trying to calm Carrie before his children are taken away. I'll show you pictures of my puppies when we get to work. I'm 
no Can you do puppy. it? Ow. Will you let Charmaine take the puppy? Yeah. Stay cool with you. No, she's gonna put him in the cage for us or leave him there. I would take Alpha who in the cage. I gotta work. I can't get out of work. You know how to tie your own? No, I gotta have 24 hours to get points against me. So many points I get fired. Oh, good job. Give your daddy and mommy a kiss. As Carl and Brent are taken away from the only home they've known, they and their parents have no idea of the turmoil ahead. I'll get you back. I promise. Hey, Brent. Okay. Okay. You will be home. I'll find a way. Okay. I guarantee yeah, you'll be back. Oh, one, way, you're too one way or another. Oh, oh, oh. I can't do it. I'm dropping this. Do you have a letter or anything? A distraught Carrie vents his frustration to our producer. This is bullshit. These motherfuckers didn't tell us. Now I know why it costs they need a assistant for the would walk around and knock head off. Walk up my house, take my kids. Brent wants his toy rabbit. Does the other little guy have a jacket, maybe? Yeah, they all got clothes. My kids ain't mistreated. I understand. No, you don't. Okay. You have well, no I'll idea what the hell you're doing. Sorry. The two boys face a long night, and investigator Jackie Bean has hours of phone calls and paperwork. We worry about removing kids needlessly. You know, it's like if the kid's not in any danger, we don't want to remove a four-year-old from his home, unless we have to. And what the sibling, the 13-year-old, saying, okay, yeah, I am worried that he will hit them as well. He has hit them before. He yeah. yells and screams at him. He's, you know, and, and so we can't leave a kid in that situation. At the heart of her case is 13-year-old Amber, who also has no clue about the months and years of chaos this one night has brought on. Coming up, a family reunion that's short-lived. Hey, how you doing, baby? Hey. I miss you, baby. You okay? When a parent is accused of child abuse, there are no easy solutions, and often it's the most innocent of victims caught in the middle. According to the Child Welfare League of America, nearly 60,000 children are removed from their homes each year for their own protection, even though they are not alleged to have been abused. We are going back inside the home now of an Indianapolis man accused of striking his teenage stepdaughter. What happens to him and his family offers an unprecedented view of child abuse investigations and the difficult choices caseworkers face. I'll get you back. I promise. Taking a child from his parents, it is one of the most intrusive acts our government can make. I'll find a way. As difficult as this removal is to watch, it raises a critical question about our society. When is too soon to remove or too late to protect a child? Child welfare investigator Jackie Bean has to walk that fine line when she crosses the threshold of Carrie and Michelle Pitcock's home, a home with a frustrated stepdad who Jackie suspects may have crossed the line from discipline to abuse of his 13-year-old stepdaughter. I got one child that does everything there is wrong and she takes away what's right. Carrie's tirades do no good. It's a Thursday night, and unfortunately for the Pitcocks, the courts are closed on Friday. It will be Monday before they face a judge. It's now 11 p.m., and Jackie Bean is in charge of finding a foster home for Carl and Brent in the middle of the night. The fate of three children hangs in the balance, and one judge will decide how things go from there. No sleep, wondering what the hell's gonna happen. And they give me papers and it's different than what's gonna happen. Carrie is faced with a dilemma. If he signs these legal papers, he admits hitting Amber. That could speed up the process, but Carrie feels strongly that his actions were justified as a parent. If he doesn't sign, the court process could take even longer. It's clear the events of this long weekend have shaken Carrie, but he's optimistic. His family will be back together soon. Right. If I don't sign, we take a chance on going to trial. If I do sign, we take a chance on getting back today.
So are you going to sign? Do you know? I don't know. Parties that matter are Smith and Pitcock Court 3. Smith and Pitcock Court 3, please. By law, child welfare court proceedings are closed to the public and media. With exclusive permission from the Indiana Supreme Court, MSNBC cameras follow along inside the juvenile courtroom of Judge James Payne. Cars numbers 2001 JC 3445 and 6, Amber Smith, Carl and Brent Pitcock will show the Division of Family and Children here by counseling case manager. Jackie Bean. Thirteen-year-old Amber sits motionless across the room. Amber hasn't seen or talked to her parents since the night of the alleged abuse. It was Carrie and Michelle who called the police that night to report their daughter was out of control. When police arrived, Amber was taken into protective custody with bruises on her face. She currently lives in the Children's Guardian's home, a shelter that houses at-risk kids. From her seat in the courtroom, Amber refuses to look at Carrie and Michelle. You've received a copy of that petition? Yes, sir. And ma'am? Yes. You've each had a chance to read through that petition? Yeah, read through it. Completely understand it. No, yes, we have read it. Even though Carrie maintains Amber is at fault for causing the chaos in his family, he signs the legal papers admitting he hit her. As Amber's parent and legal guardian, Michelle is also required to sign the papers. Carrie and Michelle realize they'll have to go through counseling, but they also hope their admission will speed along the process to get Carl and Brent back soon, hopefully today. Judge Payne isn't so sure. You're each agreeing to do some things, and uh, Mr. Pitcock, let me go through yours first. You're agreeing to have a parenting assessment and follow through with recommendations? Yes. You understand that once I sign this agreed entry, it becomes an order of the court, and you have to do these things? Correct. Yes. You understand what will happen if you don't do these things? Correct. What? That we be followed found in contempt of court and the children will be taken immediately if they are in our possession. Judge Payne has no jury in his courtroom. He is the law. His 20 years on the bench helped prepare him for difficult cases like this one. But there's no exact science to human emotion. I'd like to tell you that we're expert at doing all of that and that with experience, with training, with understanding human emotion, with reading people as they come in that the answer is always right. Uh, but it's not. These are your children? Yeah, they, the two. One of them in question is my stepdaughter. The other two are okay. both of our children. Whose job is it to raise these children then? It is both of ours. They are. Okay. It's not our job, is it? No. no sir. That's. You understand it's your job to raise these children then? Yes. Okay. That's what we are trying was trying to do, and unfortunately, we have one that got a that did not want to follow the rules, and that's the reason we are in the situation we're in today. Well, I've seen the pictures, and there are ways to enforce rules and ways not to. I understand that there was some pictures. I, when I was seeing the pictures, there's not very clear what happened, you know. Counsel, do you want to show these to him, please? I was showed one picture. I do. That's not something I could see that I did at the time, Your Honor. I'm not an abusive parent. Amber watches as Carrie denies responsibility for her bruises. But where are Carl and Brent? Where are the children and what is your recommendation? Amber is currently in the Guardian home. Carl and Brent are currently in emergency shelter care. We are requesting relative care and foster care for both, for all three of the children, Your Honor. Is there anything you'd like to say about where the children should be at this time? I would request that they be in my, be, be in our care. I mean, I don't have a problem with the situation they asked, you know, to be supervised and go through the program. But I would request that my children, my two youngest ones, be returned to me as soon as possible. Participating in court-ordered programs is one thing. Completing them is another. And that can take weeks, sometimes months. Ma'am, is there anything you want to say? He's doing all the talking. I, I want all my children home. But, you know, things just got a little out of hand before we could get everything set up to get the help that, that we need to keep this family together. So who should Judge Payne believe? A tearful Michelle or a visibly bruised Amber sitting in front of him? You are Amber? You need to say yes or no, please. Yes. You understand this? Yes. You understand you're going to follow someone's rules? Yes. Okay. You understand right now you belong to me? Yes. And I'll make the decision of what happens. Yes. Um, are you interested in going back home or you want to wait and see what's going to happen? I'm not interested in going back home. You understand that I'm going to make that decision? Yeah. Okay. You don't make the rules here, I do. Is that clear? Yeah. 
The hearing has lasted long enough for Judge Payne. Right now the children belong to me and I'll decide when they go home. I will listen to the case manager and, and uh, the, case, the attorney, but also you in making that decision. But primarily to make sure that you work with the counselors. As to Amber, I'm going to take control of her. All right? Amber is overwhelmed by the court proceeding and prefers to be left alone. After the hearing, the Pitcocks and Jackie Bean come face to face for the first time since Jackie removed Carl and Brent from their home. The situation, the way it appeared, uh, partly because of the marks on her face, I was going in with the thought that I'm probably going to have to remove these boys as well. Innocent bystanders are paying a price for one kid that has pushed things a little too far and, and caused something that may not be intended. the child pushed things a little too far, but in reality, somebody smacked that child. I'm sorry. Uh, and, and I understand some, where you're coming yeah, from, that some, this kid pushed well, it, but I it's not when it comes down, you're the adult, she's the child. Carrie and Michelle now know Carl and Brent won't come home today. They accept the boys will instead have to stay in emergency foster care and work with Jackie to place them with relatives. They feel certain that Carl and Brent will be returned long before their next court hearing in 30 days. And hopefully by the time we go back to court, by the next hearing, we will be able to report to the judge that we've already placed the kids in your care because we have positive recommendations. Would, from With their first court date behind them, Carrie and Michelle rush across town for a supervised visit with Carl and Brent. The night the boys were removed, Carrie and Michelle were promised they could see Carl and Brent the next day. That visit never happened. It's now been four long days. Baby. You okay? How you doing? I can honestly say they they don't look like they've been just put away and not made by taking care of them. Need a haircut. <laughs> I now realize how bad they need a haircut. The kids will most likely, if the relative is approved, the kids will go with their grandparents. And if it's fine, then we'll send the kids home to grandparents tonight. <laughs> you ain't getting me. So you ready to go, boo-boo? You ready to come home? Why not? Why don't you want to come home? I do. I want to stay with Tony. Why? Because. Juice, 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 juice. You want to go? You come with me now. Apple juice. Come on down, bye. Jackie and her supervisor end today's visit, but we'll have good news for the boys. I talked to Crystal out there at the relatives' home, and she thinks it's going to be okay for the kids to go there tonight. So she's going to bring the relatives here to pick up the children. Wonderful. Yes. So they get to go to the relatives' house. So. <laughs> this isn't Jackie's only case. This is just one of 40 open cases for which she's responsible at this moment. Child removals in Indiana, however, are rare, only about 100 each year. After four days of chaos in this case, things finally seem to be settling down. It will prove to be short-lived. I would rather not go back home because of the fear of getting hit again. I mean, because if it happened twice, nobody can say that it's not going to happen again. I can be very quick to help. Yeah, you know what? I don't have you're a, the parents. I don't have a problem. You know, if you guys would stay down, let me bust her ass like a shooter. She wouldn't been on the street. They're taking you away, Carl. Tonight, and your mom and dad are going to come to court on Monday. Because sissy said daddy abused her. It's not an easy job to go into anybody's house and take somebody's children away from them. Because if it happened twice, nobody can say that it's not going to happen again. For more than two months, these scenes have played out in front of our cameras as we document the nation's first videotaped emergency removal of two children from their home. I'd rather you lock me up than take my kids. The removal sets off an agonizing process for the Pitcock family, state caseworkers, and Judge Payne, who has the ultimate authority over when Carl, Brent, and Amber will return home. I need to make sure that if the children go home, it's under the right circumstances. For now, Carl and Brent leave with their great-grandparents. Carrie and Michelle get to see their boys twice a week. Even though the boys are with relatives, Judge Payne admits there is unknown trauma ahead. Because the harm that happens to children upon removal 
sometimes, and in many cases, is worse in their mind than what happened to them, regardless of, of how serious we look at it. I want to stay with Dad. And what about 13-year-old Amber? She's told her parents she wants to be placed in foster care with Carrie and Michelle's former neighbors, a couple her parents strongly object to. But that's exactly where Amber is today. The first resource we have is extended families, relatives, the, who the children are familiar with. But the next best are foster parents. We can find buildings. We can find big places to put lots of kids. But that's not best for kids. Well, here's what we're going to talk. We're going to talk about the next thing. The next thing is I'm going to send you for a urine drug screen. I think Susan's probably going to take you. Now, the urine drug place is closed. They close basically at 4 o'clock. So you're, it's probably be done on Monday. Monday. What you're going to do is you're going to go in, and they'll basically give you a little cup. You know, you do your thing, okay? And then they're going to send it away. And then they're going to give me the results. From what you've told me, I don't expect it to show anything. If it does, we will do the come to Jesus talk, okay? Okay, number two, I do think that drug education is necessary because of the, some things we talked about. Some very minor experimentation, okay? Stuff that doesn't exactly make me faint. Most people will try, okay? I understand that. But I think drug education is going to be important. Why? So you can make good choices. I think you've got a terrific head on your shoulders. And I think that you could be an outstanding youth counselor down the line. Okay, I really do. So I think that the more education you have, the better it is. Okay, and I want good drug education. I just don't want you sitting there and then boring you to death. Okay, <laughs> I want things that are interactive. Excuse me. Okay. The next thing is I am going to recommend that you also get into one-to-one -one psycho psychotherapy. Okay, that means it's a fancy word for counseling. Okay. okay. I really think there are some significant issues and we talked about some of them. Okay. I think some of that's going to have to go on before there's any movement toward reunion. At this time, I really think it's probably a good thing that the family is right now separated. Because you've got some issues, they've got some issues. Okay. They've got baggage, you've got baggage. Okay. And my worry is that it's going to, if you're not getting the kind of help you need, you're not going to be dealing with the issues that set off your triggers, okay? So anger management's got to be part of it, okay? Anger's okay. Nothing's wrong with anger. If someone says they never get angry, they're a liar. Even Jesus Christ himself got angry, got ticked off, okay? But if you could do the, put that anger on paper like you did the other things, that'd be great. But what happens, especially if we're pushed too far, is reactions, impulsive reactions take over. And then we do things that we wish we hadn't done. Or it pushes other people to actions that maybe they normally wouldn't do. You know, for example, if, if I'm playing with my dog and my dog bites me because I'm playing too rough, and the dog bites me, then I smack the dog. There's a reaction that I help cause, OK? Or if a dog, for no reason, comes up and bites me, I'm going to react. I'm not going to sit there and say, oh, that feels so good. Do it again. I'm just not going to do that. Okay? There's reactions and there are triggers. Okay? When's the last time you had a real good physical? Never had a physical. I'm going to recommend that too. Top to bottom physical. One, you're 13 going on 14. There could be some changes going on, some hormonal changes. You're becoming a woman. I mean, gosh, isn't that a surprise? Okay, so you're becoming a woman. There could be some hormonal changes going on. I just think it's always good for a doctor to check that out. Okay? Um, men go through changes, women go through changes. But I do think there's some other significant issues too that when I write the report out to recommendations that I, I think that, you know, we'll, we're going to address some of those issues. Okay? Do I think you're crazy? No. <laughs> do I, I think... I was wondering trying to yeah, bring me here. I was like, right. Woo. Are you an axe murderer? Not that I know <laughs> of. You know. Um, do I think you're going out to, to try to hurt somebody? No. But I want you to point your finger at me for a minute. Point it like you normally would. 
Where are three more fingers pointing at? Surprise! <laughs> Bye. We all do that. When you strike out, you run away, you hit carry, you blow up at the teacher, who, whatever. It's usually saying something about what's going on inside of here too. Okay, we got to look at that. Okay, we just got to sit down and really take a look at that. And it could be that the court may rule that at this time you may need to be in, in a permanent foster placement. That could be the possibility for your well-being and, and their well-being too. Okay. And the same with your brothers, because I understand they're involved in the picture too somehow. But you've had some, you've certainly had some significant behavior problems lately. But you're also extremely gifted. My okay, so we're just trying right now to meet with some people so I could be at a foster home. Foster home or foster hope? Foster home. Okay. I also think that, um, have you, you know, I don't know if the school's done any testing on you, but because I think you're extremely bright and articulate, that means you can say things quite well. Maybe you need to be in some advanced classes, things that can challenge you. She was. Yeah. Was I, she? They said yeah. they, were, they were putting me in the wrong advanced classes. She, she was in advanced. Mm -hmm. Pulling yeah. A's and B's in advanced classes and they went, went to C's and, and B's in normal classes. You're yeah. very gifted. Yeah. Yeah. She was bored. She wasn't even bored. I'm bored. I get bored. I move furniture around all the place, okay? <laughs> That's what I used to do. I used to move my room around at least once every week. Hmm. Hmm. Mm -hmm. How about when you... Um, when you fix your room up, does everything have to be in a certain place and folded just right? And and if someone you know messes up, you blow up that kind of thing. Don't blow up. Mm -hmm. Not all the time. Everything has to be in certain places, but I like things to be where I put them in my sure. room. That's normal. That's normal. All over the place. All over the place. <laughs> I that's need normal. my desk back. That's normal. How do you feel right now about not being in the home, your own place, you know, your own room, that kind of thing? I want my room to follow me around. But Good I'm, luck. I'm, I'm, <laughs> okay. I'm cool with being out of the house, though. Okay. Okay. Any questions you want to ask me? Um. Nope. Mom, Dad. Okay, Susan. I'm fine. Okay. One we'll of the things together. we're gonna. Pardon. We'll get together. Yeah. Because what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna work with Susan about where. There are some outstanding uh, places here in Indianapolis. I, we got to find out does the county work with them, that kind of thing. Uh, drug education, then individualized counseling. And then down the line, maybe family counseling. First, we got to work with your issues, then we can work on family issues. So it's be a step by step process. Are you okay? This is probably the only time you're going to see me. I don't see any reason why you need to see me again. Uh, do I think you're a druggie? No. Unless you're going to put me wrong with your own drug screen. Okay, so. How long, uh, how long of a process will this be? What do you mean by process? From the time she goes into her treatment programs, by the time, you know, you go through family counseling, is this, you know, yeah, probably. It's going to be related to the court right. and, and Susan's I recommendations. I on a referral basis for six months. Okay. And it depends on how much progress they make. Sometimes you can close them earlier. Sometimes it takes longer than six months. And we can work with them longer than six months if they're not making progress. But they've already taken the initiative to get into drug and alcohol counseling. So based on the assessment, we'll know how long they have to go. Sometimes it's six well, weeks. Uh, uh, see, Anger management. That's, well, that's what I was wondering when you just said counseling. I, I didn't know there was a counseling order. I know there's a uh, assessment ordered for the night. And based on the assessment, that, okay. if they say you need six weeks of individual okay. outpatient, then we'll do that. Right. If they say anger management, then you'll go through anger management okay, classes. I guess I have to set up the assessment. Yeah. You can do that at the same place. Cassie has anger management same right, place. Well, I, so you don't have to run I to different places. Uh, yeah. she, the way she talked, there was something we yeah. want to see if we could work, talk to him about tonight, maybe him doing that one. I'm not. I'm not sure what, what the court order reads. I think it's primarily with, with it's Amber. It's for the whole family. Oh, it's for right. I gotta, I gotta have everybody's out yeah, we gotta have Anger a, management, the place I would recommend right now, the, one of the best well, places. Well, I, I gotta have an assessment. I don't have to have the manager. I just gotta have the assessment. Cassie. Find out. And, and the referral to Cassie can be made. That's not e that's not hard at all. And I work with them, so it's yeah, no problem. Yeah, we're supposed to get a hold of Cynthia Boulder to, to, to set that up. Made. We can't get a hold of her. We can I, I talk to her today so often. 
Okay. I'll bring that to your attention again. Yeah. In your anger management classes, you two will not be in the same group. Oh, oh, sure. I'll 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 oh aren't you cool? I'll I'll look at, well, so I gotta have an no, assessment. I'm the one, I'm the one that says, okay, everybody back away, right. go separate okay. corners. Yeah. <laughs> so, Duane, will your report be submitted to the court then through you? It's submitted to Susan. Yes. Okay. I'll do a monthly, I do a monthly report on family's progress, and I send it to the case manager. She does her report and submits it to the court. If the court ever wants clarifying questions, they can always ask me. And Susan and I work very, very close together. So the whole process, I mean, it's a matter of getting the referral set up, and we're going to fast track it so it should be very quickly, very quick, mm -hmm. to get you in. Are you okay with all this? Mm -hmm. what, do you hope, what do you hope will happen at the end of all this ride? What do you hope is going to happen? You know, I, I really don't want to go back home. I'd rather okay. stay out. Stay out, what's that mean? I mean, I'd rather be in a foster home. Okay. What's your dream down the line? What do you mean? What's your dream after foster care? I plan on not being there for long. I plan on being able, when I get, when I turn 14, I'm planning on having a job and keeping that until I'm 16. That way I'll be able to prove to a court that I'll be able to, be able to provide for myself and that I'd be able to live on my own. So you want to be emancipated? Yeah. Mm, that's difficult to do. I tried to do it when I was pregnant with you, Amber. <laughs> it's difficult. What do you think emancipation will, what do you think emancipation will do for you? I'm not sure, but I know that I, I want it. Well, if you're not sure and you want it, I'd be a little <laughs> concerned. <laughs> yeah, my question is what, you know, the hers, like we tried to ask her before. Okay, she gets her emancipation. She finds out she can't make it on her own. You know, what are you going to do then? There's always a process, don't worry. There's just, always doors. Just be a bum. Nah, <laughs> you're too <laughs> smart for that. That's the one thing we, should, we don't want. I was saying that. But you know, you remind me of Dorothy in The Wizard of Oz. Do you know why I say that? Why? Well, Dorothy always, you know, she, she wanted to be in Oz and all that, and she wanted to live her dream world. But then when it got kind of scary, where did she want to be? Home. I think it's kind of scary. I'm just going to deal with it. I do every other time. Oh, you're going to deal with it? Yeah. It's how you deal with it that's my worry. <laughs> huh? Yeah, that's the concern. How you deal with it's the worry. I, I don't want to see you get involved in the legal system, the courts. I don't want to see you go to juvenile detail. I think that would be one of the worst things that could happen to you. Okay? I think you're too bright. You're a gifted person, and our society needs people like you. Okay? That's it from my point of view. Do any of you all have questions? Michelle, I'm curious. You said you tried to be emancipated when you were pregnant with Amber. Oh, I got pregnant with Amber when I was 14. I had her when I was 15. Just maybe a month after I turned 15. And it was, it was a hard process. <laughs> and it, it never actually came to pass. I mean, I was a minor with a, a child. That's the way it stayed until I was 18 old enough to be on my own. I always took care of myself and her the best way I knew how. Didn't want to go back home either, but came to the point where I had to occasionally just to make sure I could live, make sure I could take care of her. Do you, in a sense, then understand where she's coming from? Not really, because I really don't see what was so bad at home, just because she didn't get everything that she wanted. Provide what I can. Always make sure you got what you need. And that's something that counseling will assist in. Okay, so that no one's beating up on themselves. Ideally, everybody will come to an understanding, this is a plan of action, and we agree with it. I, I can't figure out why she's talking to the case manager about putting her in foster homes. She'd rather be with people she doesn't know than with somebody who loves her. Mm -hmm. And that's something, again, that counseling's going to be yeah, important that's, for. That's, and They're that's not going to send me. She's checking with Gina and Billy. No. See, Nancy, no, this, see, that's... This is a problem. I mean, this is where we come into where she's talking to the case manager. I mean... She gets to talk to women, but I don't. This, Yeah, this this is totally opposite of what the court was. The, I mean, everything in court was work back to the home. Mm -hmm. Why is the case manager going behind our back and trying to set up foster care? But there's a process to do that too. The case manager well, is the I one that makes she goes that to? decision. She shouldn't go to no. these people. No. 
These people can't and, raise I, their no, own I'm not children. Saying, no, you don't have a choice. There's a process. These the case manager get, investigates and the judge makes uh, that decision. I mean, the case manager doesn't so know these are part of the people that hit her while she was a runaway. I mean, this is, I mean, these are people, she's want to go to people that hit her while she was a runaway. Hid or hit? Hid. There, she, that's one of the people that was hiding her out from the state. What, what the court will do, and Susan can correct me. What the no, court actually, will they're the ones that convinced me to go back. Then why did you call them every other day and not call us? Did you think I was going to be worried about where you were and how you were doing? I think that's what we... Because I really didn't even want to talk to you today. Okay, let's stop right there, okay? Because what's all it's going to do is go back and forth. That's I don't think that's going to be good. What the court will do if they make the decision that foster care is necessary, they check all that out, Absolutely. all of it. Absolutely. And if somebody's been involved in something that they find questionable judgment, they're not going to be sent there. For one thing, you have to be licensed foster care. They do a criminal history check. You just don't say, mm -hmm. I want to go live with somebody, and the court says, yeah, okay. I mean, they have to be licensed foster care parents. And indeed, they might recommend a therapeutic foster, right. and that's even a higher grade up. Right. What's what do you mean by that, therapeutic? Therapeutic means there's a treatment atmosphere. Mm -hmm. People that are trained to watch for certain things, to work with certain things, if someone's having emotional outbursts, how to work with that person so that it doesn't get out of hand, that kind of a thing. Right. Right. I, mean, I mean, it's just the word foster care, is, I mean, it caught me too off guard because, I mean, that's not the indication I got from the two things with court. I mean, it was a thing that she was in the guardian's home to so we go through counseling to work her back in the home. The boys are in, you know, they're in with a foster. They was put in foster care immediately to work back into the home. I mean, this is the first thing we even said nothing about her going to foster care because, from my impression from the judge, she was in the guardian's home until this was worked out. Okay, remember what they're doing right now is they're gathering information. Well, that's what I mean. It just caught me off guard. That's the reason I was, that's the reason I was wondering what was going on. It caught me totally off guard. It's not settled. Well, and sometimes the words we use scare us. What does foster home mean? Right. You know, guardians home. What you know? What do those words mean now? So our definitions change, but sometimes we haven't caught up to the changes in the definitions. Yes. Well, I mean, like I said, it's my impression she was in the guardians home to where they keep an eye on her because instead of juvenile, mm -hmm. you know, to where she was more or less forced, or you know, she had you know, work through stuff. You know, yeah, there are significant issues, and you know this. You're going to work through them, which is cool. Are you okay now? Are you sure about that? I don't see a smile. Okay, let's go ahead and end now then. Okay. Thank you very, very much. Thank you. Is this Amber's the portrait to keep? Uh, but I went out and they take care And now I just come up with documentary ideas and then pick which outlets I think. You guys need to know for your hair. Yeah. I got a trend. Did you? Yeah, I got a trend. Yeah. Yeah. No, yeah. not my bangs. Oh, you're going to have bangs? Yeah. How, much did, bangs yeah. How much did you take off? How much did you take off? About that much. It just got dead inch trimmed. <laughs> really got real bad. Yeah. yeah. It's too pretty not to have it. Tell me about it. Yeah. It's nice to talk to you, Dwayne. Take care. So at this point, you're back at the Guardian's home, right? Yeah. How's that going? It's pretty okay. I couldn't go on the last outing because I had yeah. run away. I was making sure I didn't run away again. Why did you run away? Because I was afraid they was going to send me back home, and nobody was really telling me anything. I mean, it took me having to get out of there to find out that I had been awarded to the state and that my caseworker was changed and everything. Oh. So you ran because you thought they were going to send you back home. Mm -hmm. You really don't want to go back home, do you? Do you ever want to go back home? Mm, not really. You know, your mom says she misses you. Do you believe that? Are you, why is it you don't want to go back home? Because, I mean, if it happened twice, there, nobody can really say it's never going to happen again. And I'd rather not take that chance. Of getting hit? Yeah. 
Was that pretty scary for you? Yeah. So where would you go if you didn't go home? My friends, I've known them for like, I've known these one people for like nine years. They're like my second mom and dad. And they said that they, if I wanted them to, they would fight as hard as they could to get foster care of me for a while I'm out. Is it hard being away from your brothers at all? Yeah, I was talking to them the other night. And we only get like five minutes for a phone call. So what do you say when, when you talk to your brothers? I made them a blanket, I crocheted them a blanket. I crocheted Brent a blanket and I'm gonna give Carl a stuffed animal because Miss Victoria, we're moving, we're moving buildings. So now that you're back at the Guardian's home and you feel safe there, you won't run again? No. So you really didn't want to run the first time? But I did, but I didn't. It just gave me a little time to think. And so what, when you were on the run, what were you thinking the whole time? I was pretty much paranoid about getting caught. I would sit there over at the baseball field watching Kenny play baseball, and then there'd like be a park ranger driving, and I was like, oh crap, and I'd run to hide behind a tree. And she's, like, Gina, she's like, don't do that. She goes, you're gonna get caught that way. They're gonna think something. I'm like, oh, so I just stood there. Now, I've heard you've always been a great student, and then all of a sudden, you started getting a couple Se of bad things. Seventh, seventh grade's been kind of hard for me because I'll sit there and it, they just bore me to death. <laughs> I mean, I've got to be motivated to learn. It's not good. And I'm, I'm, wherever I'm staying at, I'm going to get myself held back in seventh grade again because since I've missed so much of school and since I haven't been getting good grades in the first place, I'm going to do seventh grade over because I'm not going to go to eighth grade knowing as little as I do know. Well, that's amazing. You have the resolve to say, I know I need to learn more about seventh grade. So if you're not at home and you go into a foster home situation, do you think your grades will come back up? Do you? Probably. Because, I mean, probably the reason why my grades went down is because at home I, like, was at home all the time. I mean, I never got to go anywhere. If I go to my foster home, then it's going to be different because the people that I want to stay with, okay, they said that I have a problem with authority. If I had a problem with authority, I wouldn't have went where I went when I ran away because they placed rules before me. I had chores. I had places where I wasn't where I was supposed to be. I had, but see, they would let me go out and they would let me hang with my friends and stuff as long as they knew exactly where I was at. And if I would move to another place, I had to go home and tell them. What would you say to people who say, Amber, you're only 13, shouldn't be out running with your friends, you're gonna get in trouble, your grades are bad. What, what would you say to people who say, well, you know, maybe her parents are right. She needs, you know, she needs to be grounded for getting bad grades. I wouldn't make bad grades if I had a little room to breathe. So you think if you stay out of the home, for good, maybe your life will turn back around. And yeah. So if you could tell the judge one thing, if the judge said, okay, Amber, I'm all ears, what do you want? What, if I were the judge, what, you, what would you be saying to me? Even though people would make it seem like it, I am not a bad kid. You can ask just about anybody that. And from what I've heard, people have they, my mom and stepdad have said that I, had, I was fighting my mom. I would not do that if somebody paid me a million dollars. I have enough respect for my mom not to even threaten her that way. And that I would rather not go back home because of the fear of getting hit again. I mean, because if it happened twice, nobody can say that it's not going to happen again. And I don't have any room to breathe over there. I'm always indoors and everything. Do you think at the next hearing the judge will take what you want into consideration? I'm not sure. It depends on who it is because I've heard that Judge Payne is really tough on kids that run away and stuff. Would you want to try and write him a letter ahead of time? I did before, but the people that I was staying with, they didn't have when I ran away. They didn't have no paper in their printer, so I couldn't print it up. 
Do you think you'll say it in court? Sometimes if, if I get a chance to speak, because the last time I went, it seemed like nobody was giving me a chance to say anything, to have any say over myself. It kind of felt like the adults around you were... Yeah, like they were kind of trying to reach into my head and pluck out something that they thought that I wanted to do. Do you kind of feel that keeps happening? People are looking yeah. for some reason why Amber is... And you feel pretty confident about yourself, don't you? You know in your mind that you'll be okay if certain things happen? Yeah. How did you feel when you found out that the boys were removed from the home? I was kind of relieved. I mean, because if it happens to one kid, I mean, you can't say it's not going to happen to another. I'm curious, you know, you're in the guardian's home. I have no idea how things go in the guardian's home. Or, I mean. Can you buy things for yourself at all? What do you do to no, get money? No, I have no money. We're supposed to get allowance, but I have no idea how anybody gets any money in there. Since I've been there, nobody's gotten any money. Because we're supposed to get paid for sweeping our dorm and stuff. And I'm, I'm supposed to earn another set of headphones sometime today for taking five boxes from Miss Victoria's room to the main office. So you can do things to try and earn money? Well, I can't earn money, but I can earn objects. Oh, OK. If you get out and go into a foster home or anything at all, I mean, will you just rely on the people that you live with to try and get you the things you need? No, because when I turn 14, I plan on trying to get a job so I can have some of my own money and be able to, I mean, because see, I've heard that if, if when I turn 16, if I can prove to a court that I can be on my own, that I would be able to have my own house and everything like that, and that I could keep a stable job and stuff that I would be able to live on my own. Isn't that kind of sad to think about the 16 still isn't that old? Don't you wish that you would have somebody supporting you and taking care of you until really. you're kind of an independent person? I'd rather take care of myself. It just makes me feel kind of like a little baby when people take care of me. Really? It makes me feel kind of helpless. So you don't wish to have some life where Parents are taking care of you. Don't worry, Amber, we'll pay for this. Don't worry, Amber, you're taking care of. I mean, it wouldn't be that bad, but I'd feel bad, you know? I feel like, oh man, I'm making them use all this money on me and stuff, and I'll feel bad, so. Hey, you wanna go out back and see the puppy? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now, exactly three months after the traumatizing night they were taken away, Carl and Brent Pitcock are finally back home with their mom and dad. <laughs> Even though the boys are back, Amber remains in foster care. No one can say for certain when or if she'll ever return home. 16 plus 16 equals 32. 32, yeah! <laughs> okay. We've been tracking the progress of the Pitcock family for more than two years. It's no surprise the chaotic events that started with Amber accusing her stepfather of abuse and ending with the removal of her brothers from her parents' custody had an emotional toll. Amber went through a year of intense counseling before she returned home. And after months of trauma, turmoil, and finally getting everyone back under one roof, the final chapter to the story may or may not surprise you. You really want to know? Divorce? This was all this anxiety about and everything. Put the final punch on it. Hopefully the kids will be, you know, they'll be fine and well. It's not a likely chance that the two of us will be together, but we'll still be in contact with each other because of the of the children. But that's all you can really hope for is that, you know, the kids are doing well. <laughs> Shortly after that interview, Carrie and Michelle Pitcock divorced, sharing custody of Carl and Brent. The boys stayed with Carrie while Amber moved back in with her mom. What happened to the Pitcock family highlights the debate raging between parents' rights advocates and child welfare professionals about what is ultimately best for the kids. It's impossible to know what might have been if the state had never stepped in in this case. <laughs>